granny, Sabner. I believe that's our ring. I know, Islam. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum managed to get the firm of Edwards and Peabody out of the owl business even faster than Abner got them into it. And now not a single feather is left in their place of business. In spite of losing the goodwill and the business of the ladies' woodcraft and feathered friend club, Lum is still trying to promote his greeting card enterprise. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library. Grandpap is at his favorite place at the library table reading some informative volume. As usual. Listen. In dancing the polka, the gentleman should clasp his partner lightly but firmly around the waist with his right arm. Grandpap, I don't believe I want to learn no more about dancing today. I know enough about it, I believe. No, you don't, Abner. This book says if, if a feller's going to dance, he ought to do it right or not at all. Well, who said I wanted to dance? He takes her right hand in his left hand. Oh, and, Grandpa. But he should beware of holding her arm out straight as though he were imitating a windmill. Did you get that, Abner? I weren't even listening. Says you're supposed to imitate a windmill. Let's see you try that one. I ain't going to do no such a thing now, Grandpa. Listen, Abner, if you expect me to learn you how to dance, you got to do what the book says. I never asked you to learn me how to dance. This was all your own idea. We are now ready to describe the steps. Oh, my. Now, listen to this part good, Abner. <laughs> The polka is danced in two-four time. There are three steps to each bar. The fourth beat is always a rest. Well, that's the part I'll do, that resting. I can do that good. Wait, don't sit down, Abby. You're just getting started now. Oh, my. The steps herewith described are for the gentleman. The lady simply reverses them, using her left foot for her right. Now, that's downright silly. How could she do that? That'd be awful awkward, her crossing her feet over that way, putting her left foot over there to use instead of her right, and then trying to dance. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's what it says here. What woman is it that dances that way anyway? Don't say here who it is. <laughs> but no use worrying about her. You more than likely won't get her for a partner no way. See about my luck. First beat, spring slightly on right foot. Go ahead, Abner, spring. Oh, all right. But if I break my leg now... That's it. That's the time. At the same time, slide left foot forward. Oh, Grandpap, I feel silly doing this. Well, you look a little silly, too, Abner, but don't worry. You'll get it. <laughs> Second beat, bring right foot forward by Glissdale and... What was that by what? Glissdale. That's what it's got wrote down here. Glissdale. Yeah. Well, who's Glissdale? I don't know. More than likely, that's your dancing partner. Well, just a minute here now. That ain't the woman with the crossed-up left foot, is it? Oh, I don't think so. I bound you that's who it is, and I ain't going to dance with her, neither, Grandpa. Well, that's the way it is in the book, Abby. I don't care. I ain't going to dance with that Glissdale woman. Either you change that to Elizabeth, or I won't even go to the dance. Now, wait a minute. I ain't going to no dance. What's the matter with me? Well, you might go to one someday, and you want to be prepared for it. But I'll change this for you. Yeah, change it. Bring right foot forward by Elizabeth. Yeah. And at the same time, raise the left foot. Hmm. Have you got your left foot raised? Uh-huh. Then you... Wait a minute. I've got to turn the page here. Well, hurry up now, Green well, Pat. Hold your horses, Abner. You want to learn this right. Well, I can't hold one foot off the floor all day long. Hurry up. Here we are. And then serve small sandwiches cut in dainty shapes. Serve sandwiches? That's what it says. On one foot? Well, here, read it yourself. That's the silliest one dance I ever heard of, Grandpab. Well, I admit it does appear to be a little peculiar, but maybe we're getting old-fashioned, Abner, behind the times. Well, now... Something new, I reckon. If this is the way they're dancing nowadays, I know I ain't going to take it up. Dog it, I'd be the laughing stock of the whole town, hopping around in the middle of a dance floor on one foot, carrying a plate full of sandwiches. Cut in dainty shapes, it says. I don't care what shapes are cut in. You can just count me out, Grandpa. Wait, wait, Abner. Don't put your foot down yet. Well, I'm tired. I've just seen I made a mistake here. Mistake? <laughs> yeah, it's a good or no me. I turned too many pages. What's uh, the matter? Well, I'll hurry up and find out what I'm supposed to do with this left foot of mine then. I'm getting tired of standing this way. Hurry up now, Grandpa, if you're going to. Oh, for goodness sakes, what's the matter with you, Abner? Uh, oh, howdy long. What do you stand on one foot for? 
You think you're a crane or something? No, Grandpap just found a book in the library on dancing and stuff, and he's bound and determined he's going to learn me to dance. Yeah, it's a handy thing to know, Lum. Would you like to join the class? You can be Abner's partner here. No, I ain't got time for no such foolishness as that, Grandpap. You just sit there and learn how to dance by yourself. Yeah, that's sort of hard to do, Lum. Not for a genius like you. Don't bother us now, Grandpa, because I want Abner to help me with a new idea I got. A new idea? Uh, what is it, Mom? Has it got something to do with the store or, or with the Edwards Publishing Company? It's for the publishing company. Greeting card department. Well, uh, wh- what is it? Say, Mom, if I'm going to take up dancing, I believe I better go home and get some rest first. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, Grandpa. a good idea. Yeah. So long. I uh, Just reading here... And some of these steps here look uncommonly hard to do. Now, here's one... Well, don't read it to us, Grandpa. Or... Just go on home and get some rest. That's what you need. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea, Abner. I believe that's just what I'll do. Glad you mentioned it. Yeah. Well, I'll see you fellas later on. So long. So long, So Grandpa. long, Grandpa. One worry fella to death. Dancing. <laughs> There's one feller that would be a heap better off if he'd never learned how to read. You yeah, know he would. I wish he never had to learn. Well, what's this new idea of yours, Long? Well, we won't make no money out of this, but it's an awful good thing to do. Yes, sir. Yeah. We're going to print up some big birthday greeting cards and send them to all the Pine Ridge boys that went in the Army or the Navy. Oh, oh, well, that sounds good. But now, uh, what if it ain't their birthday, though, Lum? That'd be a little silly sending them a birthday card when it ain't their birthday. Well, we can find out about that. Huh? See, uh, what we got to do is call up their mamas and papas and find out when their birthdays is. Oh, oh, oh. And then about a week or so before we send a greeting card to whatever boy's having a birthday, well, we'll put his greeting card on the counter where everybody can see it. Set it right over there by the cash drawer. Uh-huh. And then we'll put a pen and ink right next to it. Well, what's that for? Well, you see, I want everybody in town or everybody that comes in here to write something on that card. Oh, oh. You see, we're going to make the cards pretty big and leave the second page of it blank, and that's where folks can write down some little thing they want to say to the boy. Oh, I see. And and, and this way, why, it, it'll just be like getting a, a letter from the whole town. It'll that's be... right, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah that's a good It'll one. make them feel awful good. Oh, why, sure, Everybody sure. recollecting them on their birthdays. Yeah, it'll be just like getting a newspaper from home, sort of, be. <laughs> Tell them all the news. <laughs> well, we want all of our soldiers to know how proud we are of them and how much we appreciate what they're doing for us back here at home. Why, sure. I dog as I'm fur this idea. Yes, sir, I'm fur this. That's the best thing I've heard of yet, Mom. Well, let's get started on it right away, then. You, you want me to call up Ms. Macmillan and ask her about Ernest's birthday? Ernest, he's in the Army, you know. No, I have done talk to her. Oh, oh. She said Ernie's birthday ain't till October. Oh, October, huh? Said, though, she thought the Blevins boy's birthday was pretty soon now. Blevins? Oh, uh, Robert Blevins? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get hold of Miss Blevins right now. Yeah, yeah, I ought to do that. Do you regret what their ring is? Yeah, let's see. I believe it's, uh, too long and... Two shorts, I believe it is, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that huh? sounds like it. I'll try that. Yeah, time. ring that anyway. If it ain't them, you can talk to whoever you get. They might have a boy in the army. Well, sir, I know them soldier boys will love to hear from home. <laughs> That's the way they'll hear from all their old friends at one time. <laughs> yeah, and it'll remind folks to send the boys birthday presents. Well, hello, sure, uh, sure. is that you, Miss Blevin? It's the best idea of here. Ma? Oh, hello, Aunt Charity. Uh-oh. What you doing over there? No. Thought he'd run the wrong place. Really? Oh, my goodness. Well, when did they find out, Aunt Charity? Well, I do know. What is it, Long? Did they get any details? Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Grannies, that sounds like Robert, all right. There's a boy you could always depend on to do something like that. Oh, he's a fine boy, that boy. Is. Huh? Oh, well, you go ahead, Aunt Charity. I won't bother you no more right now. But uh, tell Miss Blevin... Uh, Tell her, well, you know better than me what to say, Aunt Charity. Yes, Mom. All right. Goodbye. Mom, you forgot to ask when Robert's birthday is. Abner, Robert ain't going to have no more birthdays. Huh? You you mean... Oh. Yes, oh, right, Oh, my Abner. goodness. But he's done just what you expect him to do. He went down fighting. And fighting again pretty heavy odds, too. Taking five R planes to get him. Five? Yes, sir. And he could have got away and saved himself, but he kept on fighting so that some of his buddies in another R plane could get away. Well. Their guns had been shot away, and they couldn't fight no more. And he stayed up there and fought it out with them. I had doggies good for Robert. 
Abner, we ain't going to let them get away at this. Well, what can we do, Long? I'll show you. First thing we're going to do is get everybody on the party line. The party line? I'll give the fire alarm ring. That'll get them to listen in. Yeah, well, well, well what you going to tell them, Long? What you call them for? Tell them. Wait a minute. Hello, everybody. This is Lum Edwards. There ain't no fire. I just wanted you to listen in so I could tell you something. It's an alarm, all right. I don't know how many of you folks know about Robert Blevin yet, but Bob's a hero now. Yeah, bless his heart. He's been doing some good work with his airplane over there in the Pacific, but he fought his last battle the other day, and he fought it for us. It weren't one airplane that got him, or two, or three. had taken five of them to do it. And right there is where the enemy made its biggest mistake. Robert Blevin is is a Pine Ridge boy, and Pine Ridge ain't going to take this setting down. We're going to get every one of them five airplanes, and here's how we're going to do it. All of you folks is pledged to give 10% of your earnings for war bonds and stamps. Well, that ain't enough now. Every citizen of Pine Ridge has got to give more than that. Not only this week, but every week. We got to keep it up till we got things evened up for Bob. So start buying them war bonds and stamps right away, folks. You can get them at the post office or the bank, but start getting them. Because you're buying these for Robert Blevin and boys like him. I believe that's our ring. I know it's Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, what with promoting the sale of war bonds and stamps and operating the new greeting card department of Lum's publishing company, the old fellows are keeping themselves pretty busy. Lum is out trying to drum up some greeting card business, and so, as we look in on the little community today, we find Abner running the Jotham Down store alone. Cedric Weehunt is just entering. Listen. Well, come in, Cedric. Come in. Howdy, Mr. Abner. What can I do for you today? Oh, nothing, I don't think. Well. Oh, gone it anyway. Well, what's the matter with you? Oh, I'm mad, I think. I hate and despise that Gomer Bates. Gomer Bates? Yes, Mom. Well, now, what if he went and did to you, Cedric? Well, I, I don't think I'll ever speak to him again as long as I live. I just hate and despise him. <laughs> well, tell me what he's done, Cedric. Must be something awful the way you're talking. Oh, it is awful. Well, I wish you'd tell me what it is. Well, you know, there's going to be a party Saturday night over at the schoolhouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard little Pearl tell Elizabeth about that. A box supper, yeah. yeah. Well, guess who's carrying Clarabelle to the party? Gomer Bates, that's who. Oh, I see. Now, don't tell me that you're jealous, Cedric. <laughs> You ought to laugh about this, Mr. Abner. This is serious business. Oh, prattle, prattle. I couldn't even keep my mind on the pinball machine this morning. Made the worst score I ever made in my whole life. My dog, this has affected you if you can't keep your mind on that pinball game. He can despise him. Well, now, don't go getting your back up over a little thing like this, Cedric. I believe I hate and despise Clarabelle, too. Because I think she sort of encouraged Gomer to do this. What do you mean, encouraged him? Well, she called him up and asked him to take her. Oh. Clarabelle's little sister told me that. Well, I do know. Hmm. All right, Douglas, you know what I think, Cedric. I believe that Clarabelle's just doing this to make you jealous. That's about what she's doing. Uh, how do you mean, Mr. Evans? Well, that's sort of the way women are, Cedric. You know, woman figures she ain't getting enough attention, all such as that. Why, she tries to make you jealous so you'll take her to picture shows and buy her presents and stuff like that. Does Clarabelle want some presents? Well, I 
Reckon she does. Most every woman usually does. Oh, I never know that. Oh, my ears. Reckon what kind of a present she wants. Oh, I don't know. You'll have to find that out from her, Cedric. Oh, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to speak to her no more, I don't think. Oh, now, Cedric, now, don't act this way. Dog, as you just buy her a present, I'll bound you she'll change her mind and go with you Saturday night instead of that Gomer Bates. Well, I'd sure like to go to the party, but I ain't going to have nothing to do with Clarabelle, I'll bet you. Yes, you are too, Cedric. Now, you just do what I tell you. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get Lum to print up a nice greeting card to go with the present. He ought to be back pretty soon. He went out this morning to see if he'd get some orders for his greeting card being there. No, no, I ain't going to do it, Mr. Abner. I ain't sending Clarabelle nothing. Never. Well, I don't know what you can do about it, Tim Cedric. Now, wait a minute now. There is one other way of handling cases like this. You can make her jealous of you. Make her jealous? Yeah. Of uh, me? Why, sure. I mean, well, just call up some other girl and ask her to go to the party with you, and then she sees you there with another girl, and that'll make her jealous. <laughs> I, I couldn't do that. Uh, I, I, I ain't never hardly talked to no other girl, hardly. Leastways, not on the telephone. Well, I dog it. It's high time you was learning how to do it, Tim Cedric. Let's see now. What girl around here would be a good one for you? Uh, how about that Barton girl? Mildred. Yeah, yeah. Call her up, Cedric. Oh, no, Mr. Hebner. I can't do that. Oh, well, you want to go to the party, don't you? Yes, Mom. I want to go to that party awful bad. Well, then, call up Mildred. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. I ain't no good talking on the telephone. Why, there ain't nothing to it, Cedric. I dog it. Wait a minute. I'll ring the phone for you myself, and then you can do the talking after we get her on the phone and tell her what you want. Gosh, I don't know what to say, Mr. Abner. Well, all you got to do is just uh, tell her who you are and what you want, and then uh, if she says... Oh, wait a minute. Hello? Miss Barton? Is Mildred there? Oh, my goodness. Well, ask her to step to the phone, please, Mom. Uh, somebody wants to talk to her. Oh, she ain't there. Yes, Mommy, if you please. Here now, Cedric, take a receiver. Oh, I ain't going to do it. Yes, you are. Too. Now, here, come here. Now, you stand up here. Oh. Now, take that receiver. Now, come on now. Get up closer to the mouthpiece, sir. Start talking. What did I say? Well, start out with saying hello to see if she's there at the phone. Hello? Yeah, she's there. Oh, well, go ahead and talk to her. Is this Mildred? Yeah, it's Mildred, all right. Well, tell her who's calling, Sam. Hello, who's calling? But tell her that it's you that's calling. Oh, it's me calling. <laughs> yes, Mom, Cedric Wee Hunt. <laughs> you oh, guessed me. Well, uh, just a minute, Mildred. What do I see now, Mr. Abner? Asked her if she wants to go to the party with you, Sam. <laughs> do now, you go on. Don't just stand there giggling. Talk to her. Hello, say, Mildred. Uh, um, Goodbye. Well, for the land sakes, now, what would you do that for? I don't know. Just couldn't seem to say nothing. Oh, my goodness. My tongue got all tangled up there or something. The very odd is a big boy like you not being able to talk on the telephone. Now, you call her right back. Go on, pick up the phone there, call her back. I <laughs> Doggies, I'm going to see if you go through with this. Oh, I'd sure like to go to the party, all right. I'll try it once more. Why, sure, that's a thing to do. Go on now, call her. Two shorts and a long one. Yeah, that's it. And just be calm this time, Cedric, and say what you got to say before you get scared that way. Hello? Say, would you go with me Saturday night? That's a time. Mom? Uh oh. Just a minute. Now what? That ain't Mildred. Huh? That's her papa. He wants to know where I want him to go. Well, tell him Miss Mildred you want to talk to. Well, me old man Barton wouldn't want to go to no party with you. All he ever wants to do is to go fishing. Uh, hello, Mr. Barton. It ain't no party, it's a fishing trip. No, Cedric, no. Yes, Mom. Yes, Mom? Oh, my. Oh, well, bring him along. All right, Mr. Barton. Goodbye. Bring who along? His brother-in-law. Huh? Now, look what you got me into, Mr. Abner. Now, I got to go fishing Saturday night, and I want to go to that party. I never got you into this, Cedric. You did done it. I never done no such a thing. Now, you done this yourself. What did you tell him that about a fishing trip, anyway? I don't know. I got all mixed up, and then after I said it, it seems like I couldn't take it back, hardly. Well, now, you just call him right back and tell him it's all a mistake. You don't want to go fishing. Oh, I don't believe I could do that. Well, you want to go to the party, don't you? Yes, Mom, I sure do. All right. Call him up, then, right now, before it's too late. Yeah, I reckon that's the best thing to do, huh? Try it again. Why, sure, that's the best thing to do. Fact is, it's the only thing to do if you want to go to the party, I'll tell you that. I hope he won't be mad at me. Hello? 
Say about this fishing trip. Ma? Uh oh. Hello, Shorty. Shorty? Just a minute, Shorty. Better not call I him. Must have got the wrong ring, Mr. Abner. I got Shorty Foster this time. Oh, well, tell him it's a mistake and hang up the phone. Uh, hello, Shorty. Say, listen, I just talked to Mr. Barton and his brother in law about going fishing, but it was. Uh, uh, Mom? That boy, he is behind. Saturday me. night. He was sure yes, behind, behind the door when the break Yeah, but listen, open. Shorty. Well, yeah, I reckon it'd be all right. Yep. Yeah. All right, Shorty. Bye. You reckon what will be all right? Shorty wants to ask a couple of his friends to go along on a fishing trip. Hi, doggy, Cedric, you're just getting yourself in deeper all the time. Now, what do you keep letting everybody think you're going fishing for? I don't know. It's silly of me, ain't it? It sure is. This seems to work out that way, though. <laughs> Don't go in anyway. This is one time I don't want to go fishing. I want to go to that party. Well, it's your own fault you don't get to go. Now, you just call them fellas up again and get this straightened out right now, Cedric. Yeah. I ain't going to call them. Go on and call them on I that phone. I ain't going to do it, Mr. Abner. Every time I get on that phone, the fishing party gets bigger. My car won't hold no more. Well, you don't have to go on this fishing trip. Yes, ma'am, I do. I'm the one's getting it up, looks like. Well, you can be the one that calls it off. Now, you tell him that, uh, well, tell him you're just taking sick with the measles or something. Or, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe that's our aim. I don't want the measles. I want to go to that party. Yeah, be quiet. Hello, jot them down to one library. Is Abner Peabody doing the talking? Who? Yeah, he's here. Just a minute. Here's for you, Cedric. I don't know who it is. Sounds like some young fella. Mm. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, this is Cedric. Oh, hello, Gomer. Gomer? Well, Gomer Bates. You would. Don't start no fight with well, him over the phone. Ain't you going to the party Saturday night? Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, we'd be proud to have you come along, Gomer. Yeah. All right, Gomer. Goodbye. For goodness sakes, was that Gomer Bates? Yes, Mom. He heard about the fishing trip from Shorty Foster, so he called up Clarabelle and told her he couldn't go to the party. Well, I do know. I doggy, this is working out all right after all, Cedric. Wonderful world. <laughs> What's wonderful about it? I want to go to that party, doggone it. Well, don't you see, Cedric? This is your chance to go. Clarabelle have to go with you now as long as Gomer ain't taking her. Yeah, that's right. Eh? Why, sure, just call her up and tell her you're going to take her to the party. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll do. Just call her up. Boy. <laughs> yeah, sure, I've never seen nothing work out like this in my whole life. Just like a storybook, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello, is that you, Clarabelle? I got it fixed. Let's hear Cedric. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Clarabelle, will you go to the party with me Saturday night? Oh. 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 I see. Oh. All right, Clarabelle. Goodbye. Oh, you going it anyway. Now, what's the matter? Won't she go with you? Well, she can't. She's got to stay home and take care of the youngins. The youngins? Well, can our mom and papa do that? No, mom. They're going fishing with me and Mr. Barton. Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. Hi, Doggy Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. No? Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the greeting card department of the Edwards and Edwards Publishing Company has no time for any business so far. At least it hasn't done any so far. But its founder and manager is forging ahead with plans to start producing original verses for the cards. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot em down store and library hard at work trying to compose verses. They are being hindered a good deal by Grandpap, who's seated at the library table, reading out loud as usual. Listen. The ordinary flat carving, which is the variety most often undertaken by beginners, is produced by Grandpa. placing a design on the surface of a 
panel of wood and then cutting around it carefully with a chisel-shaped gouge, or gouge. Grandpap, don't read out loud, Having please. Having a deeply grooved cutting in, almost U-shaped, oh, my. this is called a vener. <laughs> well, I never know they use veners in wood carving before. Don't see how they could get a sharp edge on one of them. Reckon how they do that, Abner? I don't know, and I don't care, Grandpap. Now, just read to yourself. Can't you see me and Lums trying to concentrate here? Yeah, for goodness sakes, Grandpap. How can we study up any greeting card verses if you keep reading that piddle prattle out loud all the time? Well, if I don't read this, I won't never learn wood carving. Well, what do you want to learn that for? You won't never have no use for such as that. Don't start an argument oh. with him, Abner. Come on, we'll pick up our papers and go back in the feed room. We yeah. can work there. Yeah, let me get these things here. I don't think that's a good idea. We can concentrate better back there. When a design is cut out, the background effect is produced by use of a punch or stamp. I wonder if a regular three-cent stamp would do. Let us know if anybody comes in the store, Grandpap. Huh? Oh, yeah, all right, Abner. Yeah, how about this right here along this little table right next to the printing press here? Yeah. We can just set on one of them boxes there. Yeah, Grandpap and his reading are enough to drive a man stark, raving, mad crazy. Oh, my, uh, careful, careful, Lom. That nail there where you're sitting down, look out there. Uh, oh, there you are. You're a leave nail sticking out that way. I never left it. Yeah, let's see now. Somebody else has sat on that nail. I see some cloth hanging on it. Yeah, Cedric, I think, the other day, tore his britches on that. He's come playing, looking for a needle and thread here. I'll give him that sack needle there. Show them toe sacks up Oh, there. I seen that patch he had on there. Yeah, yeah. Put a piece of toe sack in them. Yeah, well, that's all I had here for him. Had to patch it up some way. How many greeting cards you got studied up so far? Well, I've got one all did and part of another. Granny, is that all? Well, these things is hard, Lom. Getting them words to rhyme ain't no easy thing to do. Uh, read me what you got there. Yeah, let's see. Where's it at? I got these papers mixed up. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Happy birthday, little sister dear. To sister dear? The... Yeah, this is for a little sister. Hmm. On her birthday, I think. Happy birthday, little sister dear. Today you are older one more year. Natural. I hope you enjoy yourself and have good cheer and get lots of other cards like this in here. Ha <laughs> ha! Is that it? Yeah. Is it a good one? No. I don't believe we ought to use that in Abner. Well, what's, what's the matter? Did I say something in there that weren't nice? No, it ain't. It's just too common. Huh? What, what we need is some uncommon cards. Uncommon. Yeah, see, Abner, my idea was to study up the kind of cards that says what folks actual thinks. Actual things? Yeah, oh, see, everybody else prints cards that uh, they send ordinary. Yeah. And we want to send things that you ordinary wouldn't say. Oh, For oh. instance, I wrote one here that's for a feller to send to somebody. It's give him a necktie for Christmas. A necktie? Oh, them things is hard to thank folks for. Yeah, well, now... That brings up a big problem for the feller. Yeah. Natural, he don't want to wear the tie out in public because it's such a terrible-looking thing. Sure. But he don't want to insult the woman that sent it to him. No, no. So he just sends her this card. Well, yeah, let's hear it. I know that I might want to get a couple of them for myself. Well, these are for fellers that's got neckties like Corny Struby wears. Oh, my goodness alive. You better make up something good then to take care of that situation. Your next necktie come this Christmas morn. It's almost too good to be worn. Hmm. It's even too good to be married in. So I'm saving it to be buried in. Oh, well, that dog is good for you, Lom. That's a good and wonderful world. <laughs> yeah, you see, that gets the fellow out of having to wear the tie, but it don't insult whoever give it to him. No, 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 that's a dandy, yeah. But now, wait a minute, old Lom. He'll have to put it on when he's being buried. He can't go back on his word. Well, that's all right. When that time comes, I don't believe that feller would much care what he's wearing. No, maybe not, no. He won't be able to hear none of them remarks about his Christmas next time. I don't know. That tie corny Scrooby to wake him up. I don't care how dead he is, the one he had on the other day in here. You could hear that thing four blocks off. Well, there's lots of fellers got ties like that. Yeah. The most yeah. embarrassing part of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I reckon you're right. Uh, what, what's the other one you got there? Hey, fellers. Uh, just a minute, Grandpap. Now, don't come back here and start reading out loud again. We move back here to get away from you. I don't want to read you nothing. Uh, just reminding myself of something. Do you fellas have any cards there congratulating somebody on graduating? I don't know. Have we, Lom? No, but we can make one up. That's what we're in business for. Why, sure. Did you want to get one for somebody, Grandpa? Yeah, yeah, sure do. I want to get the fanciest one you got. Well. I don't care how much it costs, neither. Go as high as 15 cents if you want to. I don't care. 
Price means nothing to me for an occasion like this. Yeah, well, graduating from school is an important time in a young feller's life, all right. Yeah, well, we'll study up a nice fancy one for you, Grandpa. Yeah. All right, I'll get back to my reading. Got a little more to do here. Holler when you get the card done. Yeah, all right, Grandpa. Yeah, that ain't a bad order. No. Fifteen cent card. <laughs> Reckon who is for that little nephew of Grandpa? Oh, yeah, more than likely. Yeah, I believe he's just about ready to graduate from grade school this year. Yeah, well, let's see now. Congratulations, little feller. Is that how it starts out? Well, I don't know yet. Just studying on it. Oh, oh, oh. I believe that little feller part's wrong, though. Yes. Youngins graduating from school don't like to think of themselves as being little. Oh, no, 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 they don't. You see, how about congratulations, big growed up man? Mm, no, somehow that don't sound poetic, Sabner. Don't, huh? Sounds good to me. Congratulations, big growed up man. Graduating from grade school is awful grand. Wait a minute. I think I got a good way to start it out. On this your day of graduation, I give to you my congratulations. Yeah, that's pretty good. I believe I like mine better, though. Now, what else can we get to rhyme with congratulations? Well, let's see, basin, cation, dation, uh, ration. There's a good one, something about sugar being ration long. Well, that wouldn't fit in here no way. Why, sure it would. Uh, you are awful sweet, even though sugar is ration. Well, that's for a Valentine's card or something like that. Tis, huh? This is a boy getting out of school. He don't want to be called sweet. Oh, no, that's right. Well, let's see, facing, gracing, belation. Wait, see. I think I got another line. Huh? You are entering now a higher station. da 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 I don't understand that last line there. What does that mean at the da 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 It don't mean nothing. That's just the number of words that goes in it. Oh. Let's see. Uh, station, station. I oh. got it. From now on, experience will carry on your education. Hi, Granny Zabner. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. good Wait a minute. I'll call Grandpa. Hey, Grandpa, we got your card all rolled. I might turn out to be a genius at this. <laughs> I don't know. Hurry up, Grandpa. I'm coming, I'm coming. Don't rush me. Yeah, we got a good one for you here. <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, read it to him, Love. Read it. All right. On this your day of graduation, I give you my congratulations. You are entering now a higher station. From now on, experience will carry on your education. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that, Grandpa? I don't like it. Oh. Uh -huh. Ain't fancy enough. I got to have a better one than that. Change that last line there some way. Well, that last line's good, Grandpa, but it tells how he's going out into life and get practical learning now. Sure. I don't care what it tells. I don't like it. Oh. Make it sound like he's a great feller. Make it fancier. I'm going back to my reading. I ain't finished yet. Holler when you get the card done. Yeah, all right, Grandpa. I mean, he just don't know a good thing when he hears it. Yeah. That's his trouble. Well, what are we going to do? Go back to that in my mind? Congratulations, big growed up man. No. Uh, all we got to do is change that last line some way. Let's see. You are entering now a higher station and, uh. Something, something, sugar racing. No, I told you that was out. Oh. Wasting, creation, creation, creation. Oh, I know. The highest there is in all creation. <laughs> Try that on, Grandpa. <laughs> that ought to be fancy enough, huh? Hey, Grandpa, how do you like this for a last line? Don't get up now. Just listen. How's it go along? You're entering now a higher station. The highest there is in all creation. You are entering now a higher station. The highest there is in all creation. How you like that now, Grandpa? I don't like it. Huh? No, no. Well... I do know for the land's sake. Ain't fancy enough. Make it sound like the feller's a big success. All right. We'll try again. Go on back to your reading. Granny's he's hard to please. Yeah, stubborn as one human. It's just give it up. Long. No, we ain't going to give up till we get it. Hang on. Huh? Don't forget, this is a 15-cent card he's ordered. Oh, yeah. And another thing, I figure we can make good on this. Well, we ought to be able to sell a lot of these to other folks that's got young relays graduating from school. Yeah, I never thought of that. Well, let's see. He wants something that makes it sound like a feller's a big success, he says. Yeah, success don't rhyme, though. No, no. Station, inflation, nation. Nation? Nation ought to make something out of that. Yeah, uh, uh, uh he's a success in the nation. How's that? No, that don't sound quite right. Don't, huh? Nation. Head of the nation. Wait a minute. I got it. This is for sure. Call Grandpa. Well, what is it? You'll hear it. Call Grandpa. Well, well, all right. Hey, Grandpa, come on back. I would have thought of this right off the bat. I'll get it wrote down here. Yeah, yeah. Hurry up, Grandpa. Yeah, I'm coming. Well, how's the card read now? Yeah, read it to him, Long. Yeah, listen to this, Grandpa. On this your day of graduation, I give you my congratulations. You are heading for a higher station. 
course, you'll be president of the nation. Well, that's it, here's... that's it right there. It's just exactly what I want. Well, good for us. Yeah, here's your 15 cents, Lum. Yeah, thank you, Grandpab. Now you can throw the card away. Throw it away? Don't you want us to print it up and send it to your nephew? Why, no, of course not. This ain't for my nephew. It's for me. For you. Yeah, I just now graduated myself from a correspondence course in wood carving. I believe that's our ring. I had no good lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, all the bustling activity of the Edwards and Edwards Publishing Company's greeting card business can be boiled down to only one sale so far. And that was a graduation card to Grandpappy Spears from Grandpappy Spears. However, the poetic brain trust is still hard at work turning out original verses for every occasion. As we look in on a little community today, we find Lum and Abner in their Jotham Down store and library deep in a vital discussion concerning the publishing company. Listen. Well, I don't see why you won't change it from the Edwards and Edwards Publishing Company to the Edwards and Peabody Publishing Company, Lom. Abner, I've told you a thousand or a hundred times before, we ain't going to change it. Well, why not? It's being run right here in the store, and the store's half mine. Uh, no, but this is different. Uh, different business entirely. Ain't done it. The publishing company was all my own idea. Yeah, but now I'm doing some of the work, too. I'm writing verses for them greeting cards. Well, you ain't wrote a single one that we can use so far. Why? Well, maybe I just ain't got warmed up yet. Wait till I get going. All right, doggies, wait a minute. Just listen to the one I wrote here this morning. Abner, there ain't no use talking. You just ain't cut out for this kind of work. Oh, my. Takes more of a poetic fella. Like, say, a feller like me, for instance. Yeah, well, now, listen to this in any way, Lum. It's a card to send to a feller that's just got himself engaged. Good for you. You got engaged. Don't let your woman keep you caged. Did you make that up yourself, Abner? Yes, sir. I done it last night. Oh, well, uh, little Pearl helped me some on it. See, I got the good for you part, and then she studied up the rest of it. That's what I figured. Ain't it no good? Well, sure it's good. That's the first good one you've turned in. We can use that. And... We can. Well, good for me. <laughs> well, now, will you change your name to the Edwards and Peabody Publishing Company? No, nothing will make me change that. Oh. Besides, I've already got a sign all painted up that says Edwards and Edwards Publishing Company on it. Yeah, well, I studied up that good greeting card. That don't make no difference. I got other fellas working on them, too. Others? Yeah, Mousy Gray's writing some for me. Mousy Gray. Yeah, he likes to do that poetry stuff. So I thought I'd let him try his hand at it. Oh. He ought to be here by now. I told him to bring in some greetings first thing in the morning. Well, are you aiming on taking him in partnerships with you on this? Oh, no, of course not. Just giving everybody a chance to write these things. I'm even letting Cedric try a couple. Of course, I don't expect much from him. Well, I reckon not. Cedric ain't no poetics, I know. No, but I figured he might just happen to hit some good idea, and then I can take and fix it up, put in fancy language and all. You mean like it good for you, you got engaged, don't let your woman keep you caged? Well, that ain't exactly fancy language, Abner. Huh? That's more the Joshin type of greeting card. But we need to have a few of them kind anyway. Well, here, maybe I could be the president of the Joshin card department. Well, we'll see. I might be a genus at that lump. A Joshin genus, that's what I might be. For the <laughs> land's sakes, what in the world has Mousy got on? Uh, Mousy? Yeah, look at him coming up out there with that funny-looking cap on his head. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Looks like he ain't got no bill on it. Well, I do know. I reckon he's getting so poor he can't get a cap with a bill on it. <laughs> I don't know. I believe he could have picked out a better color, though. That 
purple shows up sort of loud. Yeah, look at that. Oh, now, don't mention his cap. Hurt his feet. Oh, I'm... Well, howdy, Mousie. Yeah, come on back, Mousie. Well, hello, Lon. Abner. Did you get some things wrote up for me, Mousie? Yes, sir. How do you like my beret, Lon? What? Your what? My beret. Well, I don't know yet, Mousie. I ain't read none of them yet. Well, I don't mean the greeting cards, Lum. I mean my cap. You see, this is called a beret. It is? Yes, sir. Well, I do know. Did you lose a bill off of it, Mousie? Did the dog get hold of it or something, tear it up? No, sir. Abner, this is the way a beret is supposed to be. See, all poets wear these. All poets, does it? Yes, sir. Poets and artists and people like that. Poets and artists, huh? Yes, sir. Well, why do they want to wear a silly-looking outfit like that? Uh, <laughs> don't hurt his feelings. Uh, well, let's see how good you've done on your greeting card verses, Mousy. Yes, sir. Well, here they are right here, Lum. You know, I just love this kind of work. It just seems sort of like a mother to me. I uh, figured it might. Did you write up the ideas I told you to do? Yes, sir. Uh, what's the first one here, Mousy? Well, that's the one, Lum, that you were talking to me about, you know, where you've been to visiting a relative and you want to thank him and ask him to come and visit you the next time, but all the time you're saying it, you hope he don't come. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. That's See that. That order sale. Yes, sir. Order sale a lot of them. Oh, thank you, cousin, uncle, or aunt. Well, wait a minute, Mousy. What you got all them relates in there for? This won't work out. It's yes, supposed sir. to be just a one person. Well, I know, Lum. That's just a little idea of my own. You see, this way, why, you just have to print up one card, and then the people who buy it can cross out the relative that they don't want to use. See, they can use that on the whole family. Oh, yeah. Well, I reckon that would work after all. Yes, yeah. sir, I think it will. Oh, thank you, cousin, uncle, or aunt. Our visit with you was simply Grant. Grant? Yes, it had to be that way to rhyme with aunt. Oh, well, maybe I can fix that up. Our visit with you was simply Grant. Now you all must climb into your Durant. And come and see us whenever you can. not Is that the idea that you wanted, Lum? Well, yeah, but I'm feared you ain't been subtile enough, Mousy. What I had in mind was something like, well, like tell them how nice you've been fixing up the yard for them, for instance. Tell them you got most of the pies and ivy cut down. You doubt they'll hardly get it at all. Oh, I see. <laughs> you see, you got to have something subtile like that. Yes, sir. Well, I'll take that one, Lum, and... Try it over again, see if I can't make it better for you. I think you better. Say, Mousy, are you sure all poets wear them burets? It's a beret, Long. Well, whatever it is. Do they sure enough wear them? Oh, yes, sir, all of them. Does Longfellow? Or did he? Why, yes, sir, I imagine he did, Long. Uh, did them other three poets fellers, Edgar, Al, and Poe? Did they look as silly as you do, Mousy? Ah, uh, <laughs> up. Uh-huh. Well, let's see. What else you got here, Mousy? Well, now, this next one here, Lum, is the uh, the one for Valentine's Day, you know. The one that you want me to write that, well, it's for a fellow that he can send to a girl without any danger of her getting the idea that he's in love with, you know. And he can still send her Valentine, but not say he's in love. Oh, yeah, well, I can use a couple of them myself. Yes, sir. One for Sister Simpson and one for the Witter Abernathy. Uh, these ain't joshing ones there, they caught, cause that's my department now, Mousy. No, these ain't joshing ones. No, right sir. Now. Just playing safe ones. <laughs> I ain't no good. I wish you'd write some joshing ones. That's the kind I love. That's, I, I, that's my department. I, I know I'm the head of that. I'm I good saw at that. some awful funny looking Valentine cards. Yeah, get me some of them. That would be in my department. <laughs> Ugly pictures on them, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the ones I want. Well, I hey. don't draw any pictures. I just write stuff about all I can do. I... I got one here a couple of years ago and made me just mad enough to bite. Well. Let's see what you got here. Yes, sir. Read that one. Up. Beloved, beloved, my sweet Valentine. Wait a minute, Mousy. You ain't crossed me up here, have you? No, sir. Just keep on going, Lum. Well, this Read sounds it. nice. Yes, sir. It starts out that way, but get a fool on Ain't right. the kind I'd figured on. I'll read it to him. Yes, sir. Good to send Miss Frederick sometime. Yes, sir. I believe it would be. Beloved, beloved, my sweet Valentine. Wouldst thou travel afar, O oh dear sweetheart mine? If thou wouldst, sweetest one, just look for this sign, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe line. Yeah, you see, Lum, that uses all the regular Valentine words, but it doesn't quite say that the fellow's in love with the girl, you know. No, it don't, Mousy. Gets around that awful subtitle. Yes, sir. This is great. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm going to print some of them. Yes, sir. Yeah, we ought to sell a lot of them. Yes, sir. I'd thank you, too. 
I hope you got some more like that. Well, I'm working on them. Say, Mousy, where'd you get that buree, anyway? Did you get it here in Pine Ridge? No, sir. I bought this back in Iowa when I was a member of the Young Men's Saturday Afternoon Bicycle Group. See, we all wore them because they wouldn't blow off. I thought they were just for poetics, you said. Well, they are mostly, ain't they, Mousy? Yes, sir. Poets and artists and big, important, talented fellows. Yes, sir, that's right, Mom. That's who wears them. Wonderful world. Well, there, Cedric. Howdy, Cedric. Howdy, fellas. Hello, Cedric. Uh, I, I got a greeting card all wrote. Well, good for you, Cedric. You want to hear it, Mr. Lum? Well, uh, not right yet, Cedric. I still got some more business with Mousy here. But we can go back in the feed room and... You can read your cards to Abner, Cedric. Yeah, sure. I'll look them over for you, Cedric. I'll uh, sort of fix them up with fancy language and stuff like that. Sure got a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on now, see. I want to have a little business talk with you. Yes, sir. Gee, I remember those old happy carefree days with the Saturday afternoon bicycle group. Yeah. Riding uphill, downhill, over dale. And want to hear the greeting now, Mr. Abner? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Cedric. I might be able to change it around and make a joshing one out of it for you. Yes, <laughs> See, I'm in charge of the joshing department now, Cedric. I'm, uh, the president or something, I think. Oh, I never know that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just here it is. It. Merry Christmas to Uncle Homer. Well, <laughs> go on. Go on? Yeah, uh, read the rest of it. There ain't no rest of it. It's all they are to it. Just Merry Christmas to Uncle Homer. Well, that ain't enough for an old greeting card, Cedric. Why ain't it? All I want to say to Uncle Homer is Merry Christmas, so that's what I said to him. Merry Christmas to Uncle Homer. Yeah, well, Cedric, see, uh, a greeting card has got to have at least two or three lines on it, you know. They they got a rhyme, so to be sort of a poem or something like, well, for the land's sake, look at old Lum coming back here with Mousy's cap on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making fun of Mousy, Lum? No, I ain't making fun of nobody. Huh? Whereabouts is them paints at, Abner, the ones I was using the other day? I don't know. I know you look funny in Mousy's cap. <laughs> Stop that laughing, Abner, because I do not look funny. Huh? Besides, this ain't Mousy's cap. It's mine now. Yours? Yes, sir. Now, hurry up and find me them paints. Well, what do you want with them? Oh, I got a little painting to do. What painting? Oh, it ain't nothing. Well, now, what is it, Long? Oh, I just got to change a certain sign and make it read Eddards and Mousy Gray Publishing Company. I believe that's our ring. I had no good Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. No? Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum's Publishing Company hasn't done any greeting card business yet, but it has consummated a big trade deal, out of which Mousy Gray got a half interest in the company, and its president, L. Edwards, got a purple beret. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library talking to Port Edwards, who is busy composing more greeting cards. Listen. Say, Lom, are, are you going to keep on having Mousy help you write them verses for the greeting card? Why, sure. Of course I am. Don't forget, he's part of the publishing company now. Yeah. Yeah, I had to swap a half interest in the business for this buree I had. Well, I don't think you made a very good deal there, Lom. All you're getting is some greeting card verses that ain't no good and a purple monkey cap out of it. Abner, this ain't no monkey cap, I'm What it of. looks like. It's a buree. <laughs> All poetics wear them. Or poets, Mousy says that is. It is, huh? Yeah. In the second place, there ain't nothing wrong with Mousy's verses, neither. Well, they don't sound nothing like the greeting cards I saw in other stores. Well, of course not. I don't want them to. We want to have cards that you can't get no other place. Cards that fit extra special occasions. Like, for instance, we studied up a card to send to somebody that's give you a present, but you don't know what it is. Don't you mean like old Buford Adams? Buford Adams? Yeah, you've heard about him, ain't you? I reckon not. 
Why, 22 years ago, Buford's old maid sister-in-law up in Indiana sent him something for his birthday. And, and he never knowed what it was? No, never had the slightest idea what it was. And his woman told him to write Melissa, that was his sister-in-law's name, told him to write Melissa and thank her, but Buford said that he didn't know what he's thanking her for. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. But his woman insisted that he write her, so Buford wrote her a card and said the present was the one thing he'd always wanted, <laughs> even though he never knowed what it was. Oh, of course, he'd always <laughs> seen that. So Melissa figured that if he liked them that much, why, she better send him another one for Christmas. Oh, my goodness. And for 22 years now, every Christmas and every birthday, here comes another one of them things for Buford. He's got 44 of them stored in his bedroom. 44? Yeah. That's why him and his woman has to sleep in the parlor. Well, that just goes to show you what the wrong kind of a card can lead to. Yeah, well, that ain't the worst part of it, though. Buford says that his curiosity over what them things is has made him so worried and nervous that he ain't hardly been able to work for the last 20 years. Well, natural. He claims that's the reason he has to let his woman support him. Well, I don't believe that. He's more likely using that for an excuse. He said it. But if he'd had one of our cards, he never would have got himself in all this trouble. Well, now, now, how would the card that you and Mousy studied up help him any on that? Well, it would have helped him find out what the present was without insulting the sister-in-law or hurting her feelings. It would, huh? Yeah, listen to this now. Yeah. Kind of subtitled. Well. Your gift was nice, but it never arose. Must have got lost or thrown in a stove. But tell me what it was you give me. I'll buy me another in a jiffy. In a jiffy? Yeah, that means jiffy, but Mousy said it was all right to change it a little that way in poetry. Well? He said that was poet's license. Poet's license? Though, is do poets have to have a license now before they can write poems? Yeah, I reckon so. I never thought much about it when Mousy brought it up the other day, but it sounds like it, don't it? Well, have you got a license, Lon? No, I ain't got one. Well, now, doggy, you better not let nobody know you're writing them poems in. Granny, that's right, ain't it? Why, sure it is. Or maybe I better try to get a license. Oh, yeah. That'd be the legal thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go running no unlawful business here, I can tell you that. Why, of course not. They'll put you in the penitentiary for such as that. Uh, Whereabouts do you get that, that kind of a license? At the courthouse, I reckon. Yeah, I'm on. Maybe I ought to call him on a long distance phone right away and get this thing straightened out before yeah. I get myself in a lot of trouble. I, I believe you ought to, Lum. That's a thing to do. You don't want to get no trouble over there. I hope Mimi don't feel talkative today. <laughs> you take up so much time asking how you are that you never get no calls done. No. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Mimi. <laughs> this is Lum Edwards, and I, I'd like you to connect me with the courthouse at the county seat, please, Mom. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Oh, I'm fine, Mamie. Yeah, Abner's fine, too. Yeah. Uh, listen, Mamie, Elizabeth and Little Pearl and Cedric and everybody's just fine, so hurry up with the call now. Huh? Just a minute. Abner, how's your dog, Gold Blue? Oh, he's fine, fine. He's fine, too, Mamie. Yeah. Have you got the call through yet? Well, hurry up, please, Mom. Uh, oh, well, I'm glad to hear that, Mamie. Glad to hear what, Mom? She says her mom and papa are both just fine. Well, huh? good for them. Oh, you got them. Good, good. Hello? Hello? Is this the courthouse? Well, this is Lum Edwards in Pine Ridge. I- I'm running a greeting card business here, writing verses and all, and I want to find out about a license. A license? Yeah, that's right. Oh, all right, I'll wait. Are they getting you one, Mom? No, this fellow's transferring me to some other department. Oh. He didn't seem to know much about it. Yeah, more than likely getting a poet's department for you. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hello? So this is Lum Edwards in Pine Ridge. I- I'd like to see about getting a license. Yes, sir. What do you say, Lum? Yes, sir. Huh? What was that? Name of what girl? Oh, no, no, I ain't aiming on getting married. Getting married? Why, law matters. But I don't want to get married. Uh, Well, just a minute. Granny, this is a curious thing. What is? He said he wouldn't give me no license unless I'd get married. Huh. Seems like they're only giving them to married men. Well. More than likely they figure an unmarried fellow will get drafted and then he won't have no use for a poet's license. Just about. Here, you take the phone, Abner. 
Me? What's her? Well, you're married. You can get a license. Well, you said I weren't no good at writing them verses, old. Well, I'll actually do the writing, but I'll use your license. <laughs> Go ahead. Is that legal? Oh, yeah. You don't care about that. Hurry up and ask me. Yeah, all right. Hello? Hello? Uh, this is Abner Peabody in Pine Ridge, and I'm a married fella, and I'd like to get me a license. Yes, sir. To Elizabeth? Why, no, we ain't figuring on getting no divorce. Granny's a hope not. I can't, huh? Couldn't get a license at all, I can get what? Oh, my goodness. Just a minute. Just a minute. What's the trouble? He says I can get arrested for this long. Arrested? Why, sure. They must have heard you say that you was going to do the writing instead of me. Oh, no. They couldn't have heard They that. must have. What was that you was telling them about a divorce? Well, he asked me if I was aiming on getting one. My goodness. This is getting awful mixed up, Abner. Give me that phone. Well, yeah, take it. I don't want to get about. no rested here for such as this. Hello? Don't let him rest. Now, listen on. here. You can't arrest my partner. He ain't did nothing wrong. He... That's that time. Well, yeah, of course he's married, but he... I'm an innocent man. Huh? Oh, oh well, well, no wonder. No wonder what, Lom? <laughs> We've been talking to the marriage bureau. Huh? <laughs> they thought we wanted to get a marriage license. Oh, oh. Hello? Hello. Uh, we got the wrong department, I reckon. It, it ain't a marriage license we want. You see, we're selling greeting cards. And... Huh? Oh, all right. I'll hold the phone. Are they still going to arrest me, Long? No, of course not. It's just a mistake. Well, I hope they don't, though, because I don't want to get arrested and lose my warming, too. Wait a minute. Now. He's getting the right department for me. Yes, huh? Hello? This is Lum Edwards in Pine Ridge. I want to get me a license. Huh? Push cart. Do I have to have a push cart to get one? Hmm. Oh, well, wait. I must have the wrong department again. I don't want no peddler's license. Well, yeah, we're selling greeting cards, but we ain't taking them from door to door to sell them. No, sir, I want a poet's license. Poet. I want to write poetry, greeting cards, and wedding announcements, and all such... Huh? Oh, yeah, I'll hold the phone. Granny's they got a bunch of stupid fellas working at the courthouse. Are they transferring you again? Yeah. Hmm. Hello? Say, this is Lum Edwards in Pine Huh? Oh, I thought your voice sounded familiar. Who is it, Mom? We're back in the marriage bureau again. Oh, my Well, listen, God. mister, I want... Huh? Oh, all right, I'll hold the phone. Transferring again. Yeah. Hmm. I hope they get the right department at this time before I get bored up. Franz, I mean, hello? Is this a poetics license department? Who? County Sheriff's Office. Oh, oh I know they're going to arrest me. Well, now, wait, Sheriff. We ain't trying to be a nuisance. Clark never could have started it. Who's been complaining? Well, they've got an arm. All we're trying to do is get a poets license. No, we ain't trying to josh nobody. All we want to do is be lawful and get a license to write stuff like, uh, where is that boy? Oh, right there. Your gift was nice, but it never arose. Must have got lost or thrown in a stove. Better hang up, Long before Both of us gets arrested. Huh? Oh, well, that's more like it, Sheriff. Right away? Well, that's awful thought of you, Sheriff. Yeah. Well, much obliged. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll wait. All right, Sheriff. Goodbye. <laughs> Finally going to get fixed up. You mean you're actually going to get the right kind of a license? Yeah, I reckon so. He said he's going to send a couple of fellas down here to take care of everything. Well, good for him. So keep our eye open for him, Abner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what do they look like? I don't know, but you won't have no trouble recognizing them. I won't, huh? No, the Sheriff said they'd be wearing white coats and a cap with guard rolled on. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I don't get Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. And now, 
Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the old fellows finally discovered they didn't need a poetic license to write verses for their new greeting card business, so they're forging ahead in this enterprise. However, they were forced to interrupt their poetic activities long enough to attend a first aid class today. And so as we look in on the little community, we find Mousy Gray in charge of the Jotham Down store and library, as well as the Edwards and Gray Publishing Company. Cedric Weehunt, who is still having trouble with his love life, has just entered. Listen. Oh, hello, Cedric. Hello, Mr. Mousy. Where about you, Mr. Long and Mr. Abner at? Why, they went to some kind of a first aid class, they said, Cedric. Oh, well, I reckon I better be going then. Well, maybe I can help you, Cedric. See, they left me in charge of both the store and the publishing company. Did you want to get some greeting cards? No, Mom, I just want to say goodbye, that's all. Goodbye? Are you going someplace, Cedric? Yes, Mom, I'm going up in the hills and hermit myself, I think. Hermit yourself? Well, what do you want to become a hermit for, Cedric? Because I hate and despise Gomer Bates, that's why. Gomer Bates? Is he still going with your girl, Clarabelle? Yes, Mom. I hope I never see him or Clarabelle neither one again as long as I live. Hate and despise both of them. Well, now, don't be too hasty and rash, Cedric. Why don't you have a nice long talk with Clarabelle? She won't talk to me. Just hangs up the telephone receiver when I better call her. Well? I bound you she'll be sorry when she finds out I went and hermited myself, though, I'll bet you. Well, that won't win her back for you, though, Cedric. That'll just give Gomer all the more chance to take her places. No, I don't care. I've already picked out a key for myself, and I'm heading for it right now, too, I bet you. Well, are you really going to live in a cave, Cedric? Sleep there and everything? Yes, Mom. I'm going to stay there all the time, I think. Well, Except for meals. I'm coming home for my meals. Might sleep at home, too, if it gets too cold up there. Maybe I'll just be a daytime hermit. Well, are you going to stay up there in between meals? Yes, Mom. That is, if I have time. See, I have to come in town a couple of times a day. Oh, to get your mail, huh? Uh, yes, Mom, and to play the pinball machine. I wish they'd made caves with pinball machines in them. That's what I wish. Well, I think you're making a mistake, Cedric. I think that you should stay right here and fight for the woman you love. Uh, there ain't no woman I love, though. I hate and despise her now. Oh, no, you don't, Cedric. I can tell. You love Clarabelle. When a fellow hates a girl, that's a sure sign that he's in love with her. Sure enough. Yes, it is, Cedric. How, how, how do you know? Oh, well, I know all that stuff, Cedric. See, I learned about life when I was an editor back in Iowa. An uh, editor? Yes, sir. I never knew you was an editor. <laughs> well, the Young Men Saturday Afternoon Bicycle Group used to get out a little newspaper once a month, and I was editor of the Love Advice column. Oh, well, that don't help me none. Yes, it does, too, Cedric. Now, if you'll just wait till Lum and Abner come back, why, we'll go over to my house and read all the columns that I wrote, and maybe we can find a case just like yours in there. Well, I can't wait till i got to get to my cave, I think. Well, now, don't do that, Cedric. That's a mistake. Now, you just stay right here and be firm. Be firm? Why, yes, that's the first advice that I always gave a young man. Be firm. Be dominant. Show Clarabelle who the master is. Master? Yes, sir. Wh who is a master? Why, that's you, Cedric. Mm -hmm. And you've got to prove that to her. That's the way that you can win her back. Be a caveman type. Well, that's what I'm aiming on doing, going to live in a cave. Well, I don't mean that. I mean use caveman tactics, Cedric. Be rough with them like I am. Use caveman what? Tactics. Well, I can't even say that. Well, that's just to uh, act like a caveman, Cedric. That's what that is. Yeah, be rough with them. That's the way I am, Cedric. Are you rough, Mr. Mousy? Oh, I'm awful rough. See, that's how I won Gussie for my bride. You can do the same thing, Cedric. Yeah, but I don't want to win Gussie. Well, I mean that you can do the same thing with Clarabelle. Oh, well, Clarabelle won't talk to me long enough to give me time to get rough and tell her who the master is or nothing. Well, Use that's... them tacketeaks. Well, you just have to be extra firm then, Cedric. Gussie wouldn't hardly talk to me at first. I tried my best to talk to her, and she just didn't want to have anything to do with me. <laughs> she never. Huh? No, sir. But sort of like Miss Clarabelle. I didn't let that stop me, though, Cedric. I was dominant. You was. Huh? I looked her right in the eye and said, Woman, if you don't marry me, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> Did you sure not say that to Miss Gussie? Yes, sir. 
she just laughed and said that I was too little to beat her. Well, sir, that sort of made me mad, Cedric, and, well, the next thing I know, I raised my arm and struck her. Did you actually hit her? Yes, sir, I certainly did, what, Cedric. What did Miss Gussie do? Well, the next thing I remember, she was picking me up off the floor, and then she kissed me. Oh, kissed you? Yeah. Oh. And now, why, she's Mrs. Lou Ellen Snavely Gray. I, I know you married her. And a mighty fine housewife, too, Cedric. Seems just like a mother to me. Well, that sounds like a good idea, Mr. Mousy, but I don't believe it'd work for me, though. Well, why wouldn't it, Cedric? Well, I don't think Clarabelle could pick me up. I'm too big. Well, that's not the idea, Cedric. I reckon I better just go up to the cave and start Hermanton. Well, now, wait, Cedric. You want to win Clarabelle back, don't you? Well, yeah, I reckon I do, I reckon. Well, now, here's how to do it. You just go over to her house. Well, I don't want to go over there, though. Gomer Bates is more likely there, and I hate and despise him. Well, in that case, why, the first thing to do is just break down the door, Cedric. Walk over to that Gomer Bates and pick him up and pick take... Pick Gomer up? Why, yes, sir, pick him up and throw him I, right out I of that house. I thought Clarabelle was supposed to pick me up. Well, no, you see, you got that a little wrong, Cedric. See, after you thrown Gomer out, why, then you pick Clarabelle up and... Throw her in a chair and say, Woman, I love you. I'm the master. Oh, 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 I couldn't do that, Mr. Abner. Clarabelle would think I was tensed. Well, I know she wouldn't, Cedric. I might hurt her, though, and then she'd get mad, sure enough. Well, yes, she would get mad. Of course, they always act that way, Cedric, but really, they like it, I'll tell you that. They do, huh? Yes, sir. Women are sure silly, ain't they? Oh, yes, they are, Cedric. Well, I reckon I better get on up to my cave now. It's getting late. Well, now, wait a minute, Cedric. Aren't you going over to Clarabelle's place and be dominant, like I said? Well, I, I couldn't do that, Mr. Abner. I, I couldn't say none of that stuff. Or... You tickle me, Cedric. You keep calling me Abner all the time. I don't look like him. Oh, I thought I was talking to Mr. Abner. No. I'm where not... is Mr. Abner? He's over at the first aid meeting, Cedric. Oh, that's right. You told me that once. Yes, that's where he is, Cedric. Hmm. <laughs> I, I couldn't say none of that stuff or throw her in a chair or nothing. Why, yes, you could, Cedric. It's easy to learn. Honest, it is. I, I ain't much of a hand at learning. I don't catch on to things very quick, seems like. You don't? Well, I'm more the hermit type, I believe. Well, Cedric, now, I'll be glad to teach you. I'll tell you what, you can try it out on me, Cedric. You can just make out like that I'm Clarabelle. Oh, Clarabelle's bigger than you, though. Well, that doesn't matter. Now, all you do is just pick me up and... Throw me into Lum's rocking chair over there and then say, Woman, I love you. I'm the master. Oh, husking shuckins. Oh, now, come on, Cedric. If you expect to win Clarabelle, why, you've just got this to do, Cedric. All right, but I don't think it'll do no good, though, I don't think. Is this how I pick you up? Like yes, this? yes. Oh, now, don't hold me so high in the air, though, Cedric. That's oh, high enough. Well, now, that's high enough. Here goes into the chair. <laughs> Woman, I love you. You are the master. Oh, no, Cedric. That, that, that's not the way, Cedric. Did I say it wrong? Well, I don't know about that, but you threw me too hard, Cedric. Look there, you broke Lum's chair all to pieces. I ain't supposed to do that, huh? Why, no, of course not. Be firm, but gentle, Cedric. Well, all right. I, I'll try it over again. No, that's all right. You needn't bother, Cedric. Uh, Maybe you had better go and live in a cave after all. No, I'm going to do this right. I'm bound and determined to learn it. I'll show that Gomer Bates a couple of things or two. I well, hope. wait a minute, Cedric. I don't think you're the type for this. I, I believe I am. I, sit still, Mr. Mouse. Here, I can't hold it. Get hold well, of it. Well, now, here. Cedric, don't pick me up. I, I can get up by myself. Here we go, Mouse. Now, here. Cedric, put me down. Now, please, Cedric. I'll put use me Mr. Down. Abner's chair this time. Please put me down, Cedric. Don't That's worry, Mouse. I'll, I'll get it right this time, I'll bet you. Here we go, into the chair. Oh. Woman, I love you. Who is the master? Oh, my wrist. Oh, my wrist. Oh, did I hurt your wrist? Yeah, I'm afraid I sprained it, Cedric. I tried to catch myself there. Too hard again, I reckon. I don't know what's the matter with me. Yeah, here, let's try it once more, Mr. Yeah, howdy, Mal. Yeah. did everything. Well, for the land sakes, look at there, Lom. Granny, what's going on here, anyway? Who broke them chairs? Get up off the floor, Mousy. Hello, Mr. Long, Mr. Abner. What do you fellas been doing here, Cedric? Well, Mr. Mouse has learned me how to be firm and domino and win back Clarabelle. Yeah, but what's wrong with Mousey? Looks like he's hurt. 
I am hurt, Abner. Granny's Abner, this looks like a good chance to use that first aid stuff we've just been learning. Yeah, lucky thing we went to that class today, yeah. Mousy. Uh, whereabouts are you hurt? It's my wrist, Abner. I think I've sprained it. Sprained wrist, huh? Yes, sir. You see, we never taken up sprained wrist today, did we, Abner? No, we never got that far. I reckon we'll have to go back over to class, Mom. No, we ain't got time to do that, Shelly. Oh. I never meant to hurt him, none. It was his own idea. He told me to pick him up and throw him down. Is that the way this happened, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Well, here I know that I know what we can do then. Here, Cedric, uh, pick up Mouse again there. Yes, Mom. Well, what are we going to do, Abner? Now, don't worry. I've got it all figured out. You ready, Cedric? Yeah, what you want me to do now? Now, now throw him down again, and this time try to sprain his ankle. We know what to do for that. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I know, Islam. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the course of Cedric's love is certainly not running smoothly. Since Gomer Bates has taken his place in Clarabelle Seastrunk's affection, Cedric has taken himself to the hills to become a hermit. As we look in on the little community today, we find poet and president Lum of the Edwards and Gray Publishing Company gaily attired in his purple beret, busily working on greeting card verses while Abner is answering the telephone. Listen. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see. All right, Mousy, I'll tell him. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I know you feel that way, Mousy. All right, goodbye. <laughs> it was Mousy long. Yeah, I heard you talking. He says he can't come to work today on account of his wrist. On account of his wrist? Yeah, the one he sprained the other day trying to learn Cedric how to be firm and win back Clarabelle. Oh, ain't he over that yet? I reckon not. He said he's sorry he couldn't get here today because the printing shop is just like a mother to him. Well, I don't think I need Mousy very bad anyway, Abner. You don't, huh? I'm getting pretty good at writing these greeting cards all by myself. Yeah. Listen to this new one I just studied up here. Yeah, uh, wh- what's this one for, uh, Valentine's Day? No, this is a card for a feller to send to a woman after he's been to a party at her place. Oh, uh, thanking her for having a nice time and all, huh? Well, yeah, it covers that all right, but mostly it's to apologize for the mistakes you made at the party. Mistakes? Yeah, mistakes and etiquette. Oh, oh. You know how nervous and embarrassed a fella gets at a party, forgets his good manners. Yeah. Blows on his soup to cool it off or something like that. Well, he ain't supposed to do that, huh? Of course not. You're supposed to fan it with your hat if it's too hot to drink. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I might now forgot about that. Well, is that what the card's about, blowing on soup? No, this one's got to do with one of them buffet luncheons. Huh? You know, where you march around a table and pick up your vittles and then carry them off into the parlor and eat them. Oh, oh. Like a dog running off with a bone and eating it. Yeah, yeah. And you try to balance a plate on one knee and coffee on the other. Oh, one of them things, yeah, hate and dislike. Can't do it, but you... Got to do it just the same. Try it anyway. Yeah. As soon as you let go of the coffee to try to eat what's in the plate, you drop the coffee or vice versa or versa vice versa, whichever it is. Yeah, that's just what happens. Never fails. Never. And when you try to pick up what you dropped, you spill something else. Yeah. <laughs> then you do get in <laughs> Well, the worst part of it is when you do finally figure out some way to eat the stuff, why... Uh, them little old sandwiches they all serve is such little bitty things you go home might not starve to death. Yeah, and even if they do pass around the plate of sandwiches a second time, you got your hands so full of plates and stuff, you can't take another. No, I right, doggies, let's not go on. Huh? Let's just not go to that party. Just call them up and tell them we went to Africa or somewhere. Well, we ain't even invited. Ain't invited? Of course Oh, not. ain't good enough for them, huh? Well, I right, dog is who is it? Sister Simpson? That's who it is. She's mad at Elizabeth. Yeah, just what she done. Nobody ain't having no party, Abner. I'm just writing these cards in case they do have. Huh? 
Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, Just tell me what generally happens at them affairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the matter? Well, what does the card say that you got there? Well, let's see. Uh, uh, pretty long. Yes, yes, huh? I had a nice time last night at your place. I'm sorry I went and broke that nice vase. Did you break a vase, too? Well, you most generally always break something. Vase is the only thing that rhymes. Oh, you're supposed to break things that rhyme, huh? Yeah, you could just break a vase every time, and you know you could use a car. That's a thing to do. Forgive me for dropping my spoon on the floor, but it fell from the cup when I was trying to pour. Trying to pour what? Well, let me finish, and you'll find out. Oh. That awful hot coffee into my saucer. I hope I never ruin the antimacosser. Oh, well, that's a good one. Good for you, Long. <laughs> I had to change that anima cosser. I think it's anima casser, but rhymes better this way. Well, you could say sasser. That's what Grandpappy Spear says anyway. All this talking about is sasser. He don't know. <laughs> that's pretty no good, ain't one. it? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the best an idea. I'm sort of proud of myself on that. <laughs> well, how many of them are you going to print? A... Oh, well, come in, Cedric. Not very wonderful world. Well, what are you doing here anyway, Cedric? I thought you was living up in the mountains in a cave. Yes, Mama, I am. It's awful lonesome up there, though. Well, I think it would. Well, that's what I don't like about being a hermit. Ain't nobody to talk to. Well? Well, natural. That's the whole idea of being a hermit, Cedric. Well, if I had some neighbor hermits, I wouldn't mind it so much. Neighbor hermits? Why, there ain't no such thing, Cedric. They ain't. Well, I know you wouldn't be a hermit if you had neighbors. Well, I don't believe I'll take up being a hermit for good, then. Well, you oughtn't to take it up at all, Cedric. Just a lot of nonsense. You running up in the hills just cause Clarabelle's went a couple of places with Gomer Bates. Of course Don't it is. mention Gomer Bates' name around me. I hate and despise him. <laughs> well, sitting around in a dark cave ain't going to help you none. Thing for you to do is study up some way to get Clarabelle back again. Now, if you want some advice, I can give you some. Well, I don't want no advice, so it just gets me into trouble. Now, what trouble have you got into, Cedric? Well, don't you recollect that advice you give me, Mr. Abner? Huh? You had me call up another girl to make Clarabelle jealous and wound up with me going fishing with Mr. Barton and his brother-in-law, Mr. C. Strunk and I don't know who all. Well, that was your own fault, old Cedric. And there's that advice Mousy has given me. You know what happened there. Oh, well, what does Mousy know about such things as this? Well, he claims he knows a lot, Lum. See, he used to write some kind of a love column for a paper back in Iowa summers. And folks used to write him letters, and then, then he'd, he'd give them advice in this column of his on how to straighten out their troubles. Prittle, prattle. What advice could Mousy Gray give anybody? I don't know, but he did, though. Wait a minute, though. Well, that gives me an idea. Maybe that's what Cedric ought to do. Right to Mousy? No, I mean right to a big professional love advice column. Oh, oh, oh. You've heard of Beatrix uh, Fairbanks, ain't you? Let's see, Fairbanks, Fairbanks, let me well, see. Well, anyway, that. she's a famous woman that solves problems for folks. She does, huh? Writes for a lot of big newspapers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get a pencil and paper, Abner. Cedric's going to write her a letter. Well, right now. good for him. Yeah, let's see. Get him straightened out. Let me find something. Well, I don't want to write to no woman, though. It'll just end up with me going on another fishing trip with Mr. Barton and that old brother-in-law of his. No, it won't, Cedric. You ain't trying to get no date with her. You're just getting advice from her. And it'll be good advice, too, I can tell you that. It'll give us a woman's point of view in your case, and that's what we need. Yeah, here, Lom, this all right? There's a sheet of paper, and here's a pencil there. All right, you, you sit down there and write what I tell you, Abner. I'll dictate to you. Oh, me? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's see. Uh, get yeah. Dear Miss Beatrice. Dear Miss... How do you spell that? B W A T R. I C E, I reckon. P W A T R I C E. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it, got it. I am a young boy in love. Young boy? Why, you ain't no young boy long. I know that. It's supposed to be Cedric writing the letter. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, here, I better fix that then so there won't be no mistake. I'll just put down here, Cedric is a young boy in love. Well, Cedric is Better a put young down boy me living in a cave so she'll know where to write me and answer my letter. Yeah, that's a good idea. Cedric is a young boy in love that lives in a cave. No, yeah. no, no. Cross that last part out. That sounds silly. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Put it down like I had it at first. All right, I'm crossing it I'm out. A young boy in love. Yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. I went with the same girl, Clarabelle Seastrunk, for... Um, Clarabelle How many years have you went with her, Cedric? Oh, I don't know, about 50, I think. 
fifty oh, years. Man. You, you ain't that old. Oh, no. Put down oh ten years, I reckon. Ten years. Have you got that? Yeah, yeah. Clara Bell Seastrunk for ten years. And now she's throwed me over for a boy named Gomer Bates. Ah, she has throwed me. Throwed me over for a boy named Gomer Bates. Yeah. You got that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. Uh, so wait a minute. I don't believe we ought to use their names, though. Huh? Might be embarrassing for them when it comes out in all them big newspapers. Huh? Oh, is my letter going to be in the newspapers? All right, sure. Better change that, Abner, and call Clarabelle X. Yes, you mean scratch out the name Clarabelle here? Yeah, put, put X? That. Mm-hmm. How do you spell that? You don't spell it. Just write down the letter X. Oh, oh, yeah, X. Yeah, 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 yeah. And change Gomer Bates to Y. Y. And Cedric can be Z. Huh. All right, now read me what you got so far. Let's see, put that Cedric out there, Z. Cedric Z, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, let's see. Now, dear Miss B. Atris, I am a young Z in love. I have went with the same ex for ten years, and now she has told me over for why. Yeah, that's better. Well, now, wait a minute, Lom. I don't believe that sounds just right, that last part there. Instead of she has told me over for why, why... It ought to be, why has she thrown me over? No, no, you're getting mixed up. Why is Gomer? Why is Gomer what? Oh, for goodness sakes, Abner. Huh? Well, I just said, why is Gomer what? Gomer ain't nothing. The Y stands for Gomer. Maybe we ought to change that to another letter so you won't keep on getting mixed up. Yeah, let's change change it and make him W. W, huh? I think I'd like to be W. That's my favorite letter. All right, you can be W and Gomer can be R. Gomer R. You ready now, Abner? Yeah, Cedric's a young W now instead of a young Z, huh? Yeah. Hmm. All right, put this down. Tell me, Miss Beatrice, how can I... Well, wait a minute. Who's I? That's Cedric. No, Mom, W. Changed over from Z. Well, make up your mind, Cedric. You can't have three names. You ain't got three names. Just put down what I tell you and don't ask no questions. All right, all right. Tell me, Miss Beatrice, how can W win back X... And get shut of R. Get shut of R what? R nothing. R is Gomer. I thought he was W. No, Mom, W. Changed over from X. X? Well, and who's Z? Is that W or is R W? And who's this Y I got down here, Lon? Oh, say, cross out everything you got, Abner. Cross it out? Yeah, we're going to start all over. Oh, oh, oh. Now, take this down. All right, go ahead. Dear Miss Beatrice. Dear Miss Beatrice. Have you got that? Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Dear Miss Beatrice, never mind, I'm going back to the cave. Sign Cedric Weehunt. No, Mom, W changed over for me. I believe that's our ring. I don't get long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the sad case of Cedric's blighted love life is still far from being solved. The sage advice of both Lum and Abner, as well as Mousy Gray, has failed to put Cedric back into the good graces of Clarabelle Seastrunk, and Gomer Bates continues as the number one man in her love life. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library. Uh, Lum is busy working on his greeting card verses, and Grandpappy Spears is reading at his favorite place at the library table. Listen. Yeah, for the land sakes. What's the matter, Grandpap? Huh. I do know. Huh? Steve Lysak won the one-man single-blade national canoeing championship in 1936. Steve Lysak? Yes, sir. 
won the canoeing championship in 1936, according to the almanac. Well. One man, single blade canoe. Well, did you know that fella, Grandpa? Huh? Did you know Steve? No, no, I don't believe I ever did, Abner. What sort of a looking fella is he? Well, how would I know? Well, you ought to know what your friends look like. Huh? How could you ever tell it was him if you didn't know what he looked like? Grandpap, he ain't no friend of mine. He ain't? No, sir. Well, what, what don't you like about him? Well, I like him fine. I just don't know him, that's all. Don't know him? What'd you bring his name up for, then? Grandpap, I never brought his name up. You were oh, the one... Oh, for goodness sakes. Can't you two hash up for a few minutes and let a fella get some work done? I can't concentrate on these greeting card verses with all this prittle prattle going on. Well, Grandpap started it, Mom. He said that a fella by the name of... I don't of... know what he said. Just forget it. Grab the subject. Well, it was Grandpap's fault. That's what it was. Well, listen to this, Abner. Here's something about that friend of yours, Steve Lysak. He won a canoeing championship in 1936. Uh, it's Mom, right here now, Mom, I believe that was our ring. Yeah, I hear it. Granny, if it ain't one interruption, it's six or seven others. Hello, John and Down Store and Library, Edwards and Gray Publishing Company, L. Edwards President speaking. And he ain't a friend of mine, Grandpap. I ain't even never met him. Yeah. Huh? Excuse me. Oh, hello, Luke. Things I never done. No, I ain't saw him today. He done what? Well, I do know. Yeah, that does sound sort of serious to me. Well, I'll have a talk with him next time he comes in the store. Oh, the fella named Steve. Yeah, well, much obliged for telling me, Luke. Not like that. All right. Goodbye. What's the matter, Lom? Who was Luke talking about? Oh, it's Cedric. Cedric? That boy just ain't himself since Gomer Bates started going with his girl, Clarabelle. Oh. It's getting to where it's affecting him serious, I believe. Well, uh, what has he did now? Well, Luke said he come in the restaurant there and played the pinball machine once. Well, he always does that, Lom. He ain't never won nothing on it, though. Well, that's the curious part. This time, he finally won. Cedric won? Yes, sir. Well... <laughs> won two free games. Two? Finally succeeded in realizing his lifelong ambition. Well, I do know. Good for Cedric. I know he's happy. <laughs> but he never taken his free games. Never taken Just them. walked out of the restaurant. Never even played one free game. Why, for the land sakes. I know that that boy must be sick or something. Yeah, love sick more than likely. Yeah, yeah. But we got to do something to get him and Clarabelle back together again before he throws himself in a mill pond or some such foolish thing as that. Well, I don't know what we can do, Lum. We've tried might and I everything I know of to do. We've all given him advice and such as that. Yeah, I know, but it don't seem to work. No, you can't get Cedric to do nothing for himself. Just moons around like a lost calf. His mama says he won't hardly eat nothing at all here lately. Just sits there and looks at his vittles and won't eat them. That ain't like him. No, no. Boundy, he's lost 12 or 10 pounds here late. Yeah, he's looking poorly, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd love to help him, but, mommy, I don't know what else to suggest for the boy to do. Well, we just got to study up something. That's all they are to it. Yeah, or two. I never expected Cedric would take it this way. Well, he thinks an awful lot of Clarabelle. Yeah, but to look at him, you'd never think he was a sensitive type. No, no, you wouldn't, no. H have you got any ideas, Grandpap? Huh? You got any ideas how to get Cedric and Clarabelle back together? We're afraid Cedric might do something desperate here if we don't get them made up to one another again. Well, now, let's see. You come to the right fella, all right, for advice. I did, huh? Yeah. Come to think of it, Cedric's case is an awful lot like the case of a young fella I used to know. This ain't the fella that win that canoe race, is it? No, no. No, this fella's name was Ballard Gilroy. Well... You recollect him, don't you, Abner? Ballard Gilroy? No, I don't believe I do, Grandpa. Oh, sure you do. He's a Cherry Hill boy. No. Yeah, no. second cousin to Virgil B. Breckenridge. Well... Used to be the barber over at Odin. Yeah, and all his vested relates in South Dakota every winter and went ice skating on the Sox River. Oh, yeah, you told us about him. I recollect that. Yes, yeah, sir, one day Virgil B. Breckenridge. Well, now, wait a minute, Grandpap. We know about him. What about his cousin, this feller, uh, Ballard Gilroy, whatever his name was, and his love life? That's what you start out to tell us about. Oh, you heard about that, too, huh? 
Well, not yet. We ain't. You're just going to tell us about it just now. Yeah, and for goodness sakes, hurry up, Grandpap. The longer we don't do something, the more I get worrying about Cedric. Yeah, me too. No telling what that boy might do. No, no, no. Yes, yeah, sir, one day Ballard Gilroy went to the circus and fell in love with a girl in the circus. He did? Yeah, the bearded lady. The bearded lady? Yes, sir, the bearded lady. Ah. Said he fell in love with her because she reminded him of his papa. Oh, now, Grandpap, I don't believe it's that. It's the truth, Abner. It's the truth. Sassy Frass. All right, you just ask Virgil B. about it sometime. He'll tell you. Sassy Frass. Anyway, the circus left town and Ballard had to stay home. But him and the bearded lady started writing letters to one another. Love letters, I reckon. They did, huh? Yeah. And then every Christmas, they'd give one another Christmas presents. And you know what they give one another? Well, there ain't no telling, I don't reckon. Razors and shaving soap. Oh, Grandpa, <laughs> you're just making that up. I am you know not I... making it up. No, you secret. are I'm done it. I can't just tell by looking at you. This ain't helping us none. <laughs> what we got to do is get hold of Cedric and have a heart-to-heart talk with him. Yeah. Get Try to get some there. horse sense into that head of his. <laughs> That's one too good. Remind him of his papa. <laughs> well, she, she did. <laughs> Who ever heard here to take like it? Him? <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? Ballard was always a boy that admired and respected his papa, and so natural when he seen a woman that looked something like his papa, Ballard started admiring her. <laughs> hey, Chuck, this is what I call Dick Huddle. That's a good one. <laughs> he might have saw Cedric around somewhere or know where he's at. Who's that, Mom? Dick Huddleston. Oh, be quiet. yeah, yes, good idea. Call yeah, Dick. sir, finally Ballard saved up enough money to go to St. Louis. Going there to meet the bearded lady is what he's going for. That was a circus in St. Louis? Hey, Chuck. Oh. Hello? Is that you, Dick? <laughs> this is Mom Eddard. That's the biggest thing you ever Yeah, seen. I just wondered if you'd saw Cedric today. Oh, he was. Huh. A rope. Oh, my goodness. Did he look desperate? Appeared like he was in an awful big hurry, huh? That ain't like Cedric. Uh-oh. Well, which way did he head for? Dog it, I hope we find him before it's too late. Oh, well, much obliged, Dick. If he happens to come in there again, send him over here right away, will you? Yeah, all right, Dick. Yeah, much obliged. Goodbye. Uh, Granny's Abner, we got to work fast now. Huh? Cedric come in Dick Huddleston's place over there just a little while ago and bought himself a piece of rope. I dog as I never thought he'd go this far. Yes, yeah, sir. When Ballard got to St. Louis, he went to the circus. Ah, uh, and... Grandpap, don't tell us no more about that. Now, we got to find Cedric but here. He's just getting to the interesting part, Abner. This is where he wins the canoe race. Or, no, that was a different fella. Well, uh, what can I do, Lom? You want me to start looking for Cedric? Yeah, you go over to his place and look out in the garage around the barn there. <laughs> he might have went there. Yeah, it's just about where he'd go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when Ballard got to circus, he, he went into where the sideshow was at, and, and what do you know? They, they had a different bearded lady. Mom, um, whereabouts is my hat? Have you saw it? Don't take time to find your hat now. Oh. Yes, there was a different bearded lady this time. Yes, 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 yes. But this one never reminded Ballard of his papa. Well, now, so, what, what'll I do if I find Cedric over long? This one reminded Ballard of his uncle. His Uncle Roy. Grandpap, be quiet. I'm trying to ask Mom a question. Yes, sir. After Ballard got to talking to this new bearded lady, he discovered that it actually was his Uncle Roy. He was just dressed up like a woman. Hi, doggies, Mom. Look out there in the road. Uh, what is it? It's Cedric walking right down the middle of the road there. Look at there. Uh, has he got the rope with him? Yeah, yeah, and there's a bunch of young ones following him, too. Oh, my goodness. Uh, hurry up. Run to the door there and holler at yeah, him. Yeah, I'll get him. I'll get him. I'll get him. Yeah, see, you could have knocked Ballard over with a feather whenever he discovered that was his Uncle Roy. He's always fond of his Uncle Roy. Hey, Cedric. Cedric, come in here a minute. I hope he comes in. Is he coming, Abner? Yeah, yeah, he's coming. Hurry up, Cedric! Now, now, be careful now what you say to him. Yeah, yeah. One wrong word to a sensitive boy like him, and he's liable to strangle himself or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, I'll watch it, I'll watch I'm it. I'm easy about it. Yeah. yeah. Come on in, Cedric, old boy. <laughs> come in. Howdy, Mr. Abner. Howdy, Mr. Loom. Hello, Cedric. Uh, what was you fellas wanted? Well, uh, come on in and sit down, Cedric. Uh, we wanted to talk to you a few minutes here. Well, I ain't got much time. I'm in an awful big hurry. Yeah, well, that's all right. You can take a little time here. Yeah, to maybe you ought to leave that rope with us, Cedric. Oh, no, Mom, I, I need this rope. No, you don't now, yes, either. Yes, Mom, I do, Donnie. I need it to rope off a place where the folks can stand and watch. 
Stand and watch what, Cedric? Stand and watch me play two free games on the pinball machine. I finally beat the doggone thing. I believe that's our ring. I know his llama. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Llama and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Cedric's long-awaited triumph over the pinball machine at Luke Spears' restaurant brought new joy into his melancholy life and made him forget his romantic troubles. Lum and Abner have ceased to worry about Cedric now and have renewed their attention to the many duties of their combined store, library, and publishing company. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum in the Jotham Down store that Abner is just entering. that sign you're putting up? Is it going to be a picnic or something? No, this ain't for no picnic. Leastways, it ain't going to be no picnic for them Japs. Japs? Yeah. What is it? Just a second. You can read it for yourself. Oh. There. Hmm. Wanted. Officers for the U.S. Marine Corps. Corps. Corps, that is. Oh, they Dick misspelled Huddle. it, huh? No, that's what Dick Hudson says it is. Oh, well, I do know. Hmm. What, well, does a government want officers for that? Yeah, they not only want them, they need them. Thousands of them. They, they want them right away. Well, I doggy then. We better help the government get them, Mom. Well, that's the reason I put up this sign, to help them. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, uh, what kind of fellas do they want for officers? Well, they got to be awful good ones, I can tell you that. They do, huh? Yeah, them Marines are one of the fightingest bunch of fellas there is in the whole world. Well... They do their fighting on the water and on the land and in the air, too. Well, <laughs> a dog is there every place, ain't he? Oh, yeah. So you can see it takes an awful smart young feller with a lot of nerve to get to be an officer in an outfit like that. Yeah, yeah. I reckon he sort of wants uh, the college fellers in, huh? Yeah. Any graduate with a degree can sign up for it. Uh-huh. That is, if he summers twixt 20 and 30 year old and he's in good condition. Uh-huh. See, you got to pass a physical examination, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. Now, who do we know around here has got a college degree? I was just studying about that myself a while ago. How about Jed Sumter's boy, Albert? Uh, he's a college feller. Yeah, granny, I never thought about him. Be a good one, too. Oh, he's a fine boy. Fine yeah, he's boy. always captain of the football team or the basketball team or something. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of boys they need for officers. Fellers that are natural-born leaders. Yeah, well, that Albert would sure be the one, and he's a natural-born leader if ever I seen one. And as you know, when you stop to think about it, Emma, the war's sort of like a football game, only a lot bigger and a heap more important. A football game? Yeah, if you stop and think about it. Now, when this game started out, the Jap team sort of had the ball. Yeah. Of course, they started playing before the rest of us was ready, too. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. now we're putting in our best players, and we've took the ball away from them. Oh, yeah. My granny, we're going to make a heap of touchdowns now. <laughs> well, good for us. We made a couple of them not long ago, didn't we? Over <laughs> at Coral Sea and over at Midway. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. A kick for an extra point. And that's where them Marines comes in awful handy, too. They're about the best ball carriers we got. Oh, them boys are dandy, yeah. yeah. If Albert can get to be a captain in this team, he's got something to be proud of for the rest of his life. Yeah, oh, wait a minute, Tolum. I just happen to think here. Albert ain't done with college yet. Well, that don't make no difference. Well, uh, what I mean is, oh, he, he ain't going to get his degree till he gets through college. Uh, I know, I know, I know. But according to this here poster, the government sent us, he can sign up anyway. He can. Yeah, no matter if he's a senior or a junior or a freshman or a sophomore or what he is. Hmm. Of course, it says here that he has to be young enough so that he'll get his degree before he gets to be 27 years old. Yeah. 
Well, now, how can he get a degree if he, he's uh, left college to go in the Marines home? Well, he don't leave college. Oh. The idea is that the Marines will accept the boys that's still in college now, but they won't be called until after they graduate. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That gives Albert a chance to sign. Sure, sure. Of course, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he ain't already did it. No. Knowing Albert like I do. <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. Just about what Albert do. Well, let's see now. Who else can we think of around here? There ought to be somebody. Oh. Howdy, Mr. Long. Howdy, Mr. Abner. Uh, howdy, Cedric. Come on back. Hey, doggies, that's an awful long face you got on there today. <laughs> it's the only one I got. <laughs> yeah. Are you still mooning around, Cedric? You ought to be getting over this pretty soon. Why, sure, I thought you was happy because you went from that uh, and free games on that pinball machine the other day. Ain't that what you've been trying to do for ever since Luke got the thing in down there? Yes, Mom, I thought I was happy, but still, I, I talked to Clarabelle. Clarabelle? That spoiled everything, yes, sir. Oh, what'd she have to say? Well, I figured she'd admire me for finally beating a pinball machine, but she said that weren't nothing. She did, huh? She said Gomer Bates never wasted his time on no such foolish things as pinball machines. Is that what she actually said, yes, Cedric? Well, she sure said it. Well? Pinball machines ain't foolish things at all, are they? Well, of course they are, Cedric. Yeah. Claire Bell's right. Growed up boy like you oughtn't to be wasting your time over there playing with that thing. No, no. no. If you want to win back Claire Bell Seastrunk, you've got to actually do something that she can admire you for. you got to make a success out of yourself. That's what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know nothing to make a success out of myself with, though, hardly. But well, there ought to be something, Cedric, for you to do. Maybe you could take over your Paul's blacksmith shop down there. Wait a minute, till I know. How about that, that poster? Mom? That poster there, look there. Right, right behind you there. Oh. See there? Wanted. Officers for the U.S. Marine Corps. What is that word, Mom? Corps. Corps. Uh, why, why not get Cedric to be one of them, Mom? I know Clarabelle had more him for that. Well, natural. That's the best thing a young feller can be, but I'm feared Cedric ain't got the, uh, what do they call them there, the qualifications. Uh, no, Mom, I ain't got none of them, I know. Had the mumps once, but I got over them. Well, now, uh, where, whereabouts can he go to sign up, Mom? Yes, Mom, I'd like to get started on it right away. <laughs> Hope they got generals in the Marine Corps. That's what I'd like to be, a general, I think. Well. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute, Cedric. You can't sign up because they wouldn't even take you in the draft. You got a 4F classification. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Yeah, them flat feet of yours, Cedric, I don't believe they'd ever take you. Well, I'll bet you I can walk further than any of them. They said I couldn't march. I can go out coon hunting or possum hunting of a night and walk all night long. I'd just like to get some of them fellers that... And, and walk them some night. Well, I don't know about that, Cedric, but with them feet like you, you wear your socks out in the end step, Cedric. You ain't going to take nobody like that. You look like you're standing on skis there. Yeah, you look like a rocker if you're standing. Why, well, sure you do. <laughs> Call her Josh, you mean. No, they well, don't I, I believe I'll you. sign up anyway. Maybe they're different from the Army. No. Oh. I think that's what I'd like to take up, being an officer in the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't, Cedric. You ain't got no college degree. Why, huh? Of course not. Yeah, but Lama poster says that they can sign up even though they ain't got no degree. It says that they'll get called later on when they graduate. Now, how could Cedric graduate from college? He ain't never even finished grammar school. Oh, that's right, ain't he? Yeah. Well, well, maybe I'll just skip grammar school and go right on into college. I believe that's what I'll do. Well, I don't believe you can do that, Cedric. Yes, Mom, I can. It was just on account of them little chairs that I give up grammar school. I got too big for them. Couldn't get my knees up under the desk. But I bound you they got chairs in college that's big enough for me. Why, sure, I reckon they would. I know Albert Sumter. He's a pretty big boy. Well, it takes a heap more than just having a chair big enough for you to get you into college. I can tell you that. Does, huh? And it takes more than just a college education to get to be an officer in the Marine Corps, too. It takes a fellow that's way above the average. Well. well... Am I above the average, Mr. Lone? Well, not exactly, Cedric. Now, we better study up something else for you to get into, Cedric. Something else that'll make Clarabelle admire you. Yeah. I want to be an officer in the Marines. That's the one thing I want to be. I've got my mind made up now. Well, I don't blame you, Cedric, but in your case, it's just impossible. You ain't got the qualifications, and that's all they are to it. 
now. I'd love to recommend you, Cedric. Much as they need young fellows to become officers, but it just can't be done. No, no, you'll have to become something else, Cedric. A good blacksmith like your pa or something like well, that. I don't want to be no blacksmith. I want to be a marine officer so as I can get to sing that song they always sing. From the halls of Montana Zuma. That's Monty Zuma, Cedric. Montana, somewhere else, I think. That's a state. Whatever it is, I want to sing it. From the halls of Monty Zuma. From the shores of Tripoli. <laughs> yeah, I can sing that good. I done learned it. Yeah, yes, you Cedric, have. Cedric, I hate to keep breaking your heart this way, but you might just as well make up your mind that you can't get in. Are you sure I can't, Mr. Long? Yes, yeah, Cedric, might just well face the facts. Oh, don't go on it anyway. I believe I'll go home and ask my papa. See if he knows some way I can get in there. Well, you can go home and ask him if you want to, Cedric, but it won't do you no good. No. Well, I'm going to try anyway. I'll see you fellas later. Yeah, all right, Cedric. So long. So long. I don't it's just a shame that he couldn't get in, though. There's a disappointing boy I ever seen in my life. I believe he wants to get in this yeah. army somewhere. He's a good so boy. Yeah. yeah. You can't blame him, Granny. I know if I was a young fellow, that's the first thing I'd try to do. Yeah. Go right direct to a Marine recruiting station and enlist for that officer's training. Wait a minute. What was that age limit on the poster, Ed? Oh, it ain't no use, Long Life. Studying about there. You can't be over 30. Oh, you study him at it, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right. You reckon if I shaved off my mustache and you got shut of your whisker? Or... No, I reckon not. No, I'm fear that recruiting feller would still be able to tell, Long. Besides, I mean, you ain't got no college degree neither, Long. Yeah, that's right. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's sort of. Stirs a feller up inside to think about it, though, don't I? Yeah, I dog it, it sure does. I'd love to get in there myself. And if we was just only young, super average fellers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> From the halls of Montezuma to the, the shores of Tripoli. I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lama. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lama and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Cedric still has not been able to patch up his troubles with Clarabelle, but nobody seems to worry much about it anymore, except Cedric. As we look in on the little community today, it's late in the afternoon, and Lum has already left for home. We find Abner, alone in the Chatham Down store and library, as Cedric walks in with a much happier look on his face. Listen. Wonderful world, Mr. Abner. Huh? Oh, well, wonderful world, Cedric. <laughs> <laughs> sure is, ain't it? Hey, doggies, you look mighty chipper today. You got things straightened out with Clarabelle again, have you? Yes, Mom. Got everything all straightened out now, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Cedric. Tell you, you've been giving us and yourself and everybody else a heap of trouble around here with your romantic problems. Yes, Mom, I reckon I did all right. But that's all over now. Well, oh, when was it that her and you made up, Cedric? Well, we ain't exactly made up, Mr. Abner. Oh, you ain't? No, Mom. See, here's how it is. About, about three or four months ago, her and me got ourselves engaged. Engaged? Yes, Mom. Why, Cedric, we, hon, I never know that. <laughs> yeah, I never told nobody. Well, why didn't you tell me in long? Well, it was a sort of a secret engagement, I think. Oh, I see. Secret, huh? Yes, Mom. <laughs> I kept it a secret from everybody. Well? Never told nobody about it. Fact is, I never even told Clarabelle. <laughs> kept it a secret from her, too. Oh. Started to tell her a couple of times, but I never. Well, I reckon it is best not to spread them things around till you're sure it's going to work out all right. Well, uh, go ahead, Cedric. Uh, what's the rest of the story? Well, then Gomer Bates come along. 
And he sort of taken Clarabelle away from me. Yeah, I know that. And, and Clarabelle wouldn't go no place with me no more. No. Wouldn't hardly even talk to me on the telephone. Hmm. And then her and her little sister told me she never wanted to see me again in her whole life as long as she lived. Oh, well, she oughtn't to have said that now. And then this morning her little sister told me that Clarabelle was going steady with Gomer and they was fixing to get engaged. Oh, my goodness. So here's what I decided to do, Mr. Abbott. Well, now, here now, Cedric, I hope you ain't studied up nothing rash. Well, I believe it's the thing for me to do, though, Mr. Abner. Well, I hope it's the right thing. What is it? I've got my mind made up. Well, what is it, Cedric? Mr. Abner, I've decided I'm going to break off my engagement with Clarabelle. Your engagement? Yes, ma'am. Going to do it. Sure am. Well, it don't appear to me like you've got an engagement to break off, Cedric. Well, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyways. I'll sure... Well, things being like this, I reckon that is the best altitude for you to take, Cedric. If it'll make you happier and set things right in your own mind, why, well, that's a thing for you to do, I reckon. Well, I'm going to do it, too. I don't believe it'd work out good no other way. No, of course not. There'd be me engaged to Clarabelle, Clarabelle engaged to Gomer, and, well, I don't know. I, I, I believe the three of us wouldn't get along very good together. Special since I hate and despise Gomer, so. Yeah, well, I agree with you, Cedric. And I believe getting a shot of Clarabelle is going to be a good thing for you, too. More than likely, a girl like her would always give you trouble, Cedric. Special with Gomer in there. Yeah, and she don't appear like the kind of a girl that you could learn anything to. And ain't but one kind that makes a good woman, Cedric. That's the kind you can learn them how to do anything you tell them to. Yes, ma'am. Well, now, like, for instance, that's the way I got Elizabeth learned. You got Miss Elizabeth learned good? Just like a lion tamer's got his lines learned, see. Oh, well, good for you. Oh, Can my. she do some tricks? Well, no, but she does what I tell her to. I could call her up right now and, well, tell her to get out there in the garden and start hoeing, and I'd know that she'd get out there and just hoe for all she'd worth. Oh, I don't believe you could, Mr. Abbott. Oh. Do you have to take a chair in one hand and a pistol in the other like they do at the circus? Oh, no, no, I don't do that. Just call her. My word is law around that place, I'll tell you that. Oh. I am the master of my home, I think. Well, uh... I don't believe you could do that today. Oh, though. yes, yes, I could. Well, I could do it right now. Sir. No, Miss Elizabeth ain't home today. Huh? She went out to the Barton place. Oh, the Barton yeah, place? Yeah. How do you know, Cedric? Well, she stopped by our place this morning on her way out there, and I hear her tell my mama about it. Oh, good, that's peculiar. She never mentioned nothing about it to me. What she went out there for? Miss Barton asked her to come over and help her make a wedding dress for Mildred. A wedding dress? Yes, Mom. Is Mildred fixing to get married? Oh, yes, Mom. She's she's going to the army camp where Ernest MacMillan's stationed at, and they're going to have a military wedding. I think that's what she said. Well, I do. No, well, good for little Mildred and Ernest. Well, and Elizabeth's going to help make Mildred's dress, huh? Yes, Mom. I heard her tell my mama that she was going to sew on the train today. Well, that's awful. I thought it. Huh? Sew on a train? Is that what she said? Yes, Mom. I, I hit her with my own ears, I believe. Well, if that don't beat the bugs of fighting, couldn't she just sew the dress here at home and let Mildred take it with her after it was done? Now, why does Elizabeth have to get on a train to do the sewing? I don't know. I heard her say it. That's all I know. I Abbott. bound you that dress is already done, Cedric. Elizabeth's just using this as an excuse to tag along and go with that wedding. That's just about what she's doing. Well, is Miss Elizabeth going clean to the army camp with Mildred? Why, of course she is. Of course she is. For there one thing that woman loves is going to wedding and riding on trains. She'll do my now anything to do that. <laughs> she will. Oh, yes. I dog it now. Why she never told me nothing about it, I don't know. Well, I reckon I do, too, for she knowed good and well I wouldn't let her go traipsing off all over the country this way. Very right, it's a grown-up woman like her sneaking off to a wedding. I dog it, I ain't gonna let her get away with this, neither, Cedric. What you gonna do about it, Mr. Edwards? Well, I'm gonna stop her, that's what. She's got to go to the county seat before she can get on the train. Well, maybe we can catch her before she gets her. I'll tell you what, I'll call up Ms. Barton and see how long ago she left. And while I'm doing that, you run over home and get your car, Cedric, and come back oh, over I here. Oh, I can't, Mr. Ebner, I can't. I, I've taken all the tires off from it. I've given them to the giver men. Oh, my God, doggies, we'll go in there on the rims and go on, get it. This is important. Let's see now, what's a Barton ring? Uh, it's, oh, a short and a long and a short, I recollect now. And doggies, maybe she ain't left there yet. I'll learn her a thing or two. I won't stand for it. I won't do it. Very easy riding on them rims, Mr. Abner. I don't care. We got to do it, Cedric. That's all there are to it. This ain't... Oh, hello? Is that you, Miss Barton? 
Uh, has Elizabeth left yet? She has, huh? Uh, how long ago? Oh, my goodness. Hey, well, I ain't got time to talk to you now, Miss Barton. Uh, goodbye. All right, Doggy, did you hear that, Cedric? No, Mom, I, I weren't listening on the telephone. Well, she you left know. there about an hour ago. That means she's on the train by now, just sure as a world. You still want me to get my car, Mr. Abner? No, no, ain't no use now. I've got to study up some other way of stopping her. Dad blame that woman running off to weddings without telling me. Who's going to get my supper for me tonight? That's what I'd I like to know. know. I don't know. You want to come over and eat with us tonight? Well, I reckon I'll have to. Can't sit around here and starve to death. Maybe I'll eat with Lon, though. His cooking ain't awful good, but it's better than nothing. Wasn't that our ring there? I don't know what might have been, Cedric. Ain't you going to answer it? No, I ain't got time for answering no phones and such. Uh, answer it for me, Cedric. Yes, Go no. ahead. Dad, blame Let's that woman. Now. Oh, yeah, I'll do it this way. Hello, jot them down, store and stuff. Mr. Cedric talking. Can't understand. Mom? Oh, yeah, he's here. Just a minute. I don't want to talk to nobody now, Yeah, Cedric. but it's Miss Elizabeth, your woman. Elizabeth? Well, if she ain't got an R calling up at a time like... Give me that phone. Give it here, Cedric. Give, Give it oh, here. Oh, oh. Now, listen here, Elizabeth. You stop this foolishness and get right off of that train. You know what I'm talking about. Cedric told me she was helping to make a wedding dress for Mildred Barton and that you was going to sew on a train today. So don't try to act so innocent. Now, you do as I tell you and get off that train. Why, you are too. I hear it all about it. Now, you get back home and fix my supper for me and don't give me no back talk. Elizabeth, I said, don't give me no back talk. Goodbye. See, Cedric, that's the way you got to talk to him. Oh, well, will Miss Elizabeth sure enough get off the train now? Why, of course she will. I told her to, didn't I? Yes, Mom. Gosh, this sure is wonderful, ain't it, Mr. Abner? You mean the way I got control over my woman? No, I mean them having telephones on the trains that way. Telephones on trains? Yes, Mom. Scientific is sure wonderful. Why, Cedric, he ain't got no telephones on trains. Where'd you ever get such a silly idea as that? Well, wasn't Miss Elizabeth talking to you on one of them just now? Why, of course she weren't talking. Huh? In fact, she talked to me, too, didn't she? All right, doggies, wait a minute here, Cedric. There's something curious around here. She couldn't have been on no train. She couldn't have. Huh? Why, of course not. Where right, I is her trying to make me believe she's on a train when she weren't at all. I bound you she's right here in town, Summers. Might even be over home for all I know. Well, how did she get there so fast? Reckon? I don't know, I doggy Cedric. I don't know what's getting into that woman. woman on the rims, I bet you. No, nah, she never told me no stories like this before. I've got to give her a good talking to. I can see that right now. Yes, sir, that's just what I'm going to do. You want to take your ring in the uh, Oh, I answer it, Cedric. i got to study on this for a while. Can't I understand. Hope it's somebody it. calling from a train. I love it. Hello, jot them down, store and Cedric Lee Hunt talking in the library. Mom? Well, as I've got her. No, Mom, out. he's feeling all right, I think. Yes, Mom. Yes, Mom. All right, I'll tell him. Goodbye. There's Miss Elizabeth again, Mr. Abner. Elizabeth? Well, where'd she try to make out like she's calling from this time? From home, I reckon, because she said. Just called up the other time to find out why you ain't got home to supper yet. Huh? She says it's all ready for you. Oh, so she's finally decided to get my supper ready, huh? Well, all right. Hand me my hat there, Cedric. Yes, Mom. Hmm. You want me to lock up for you? No, so we'll lock up together, Cedric, because I'm going home with you. With me? Yes, sir. I'll show that woman a thing or two. You've just got to treat them this way, Cedric. It's the only way to learn them. Only way. <laughs>